So in a previous video, I showed you how you can make HTTP requests using JavaScript's inbuilt fetch API. And I showed you how you can write get requests, post and put requests, and also delete requests. So if you're not familiar with that, uh, you can go out and check, the, check out the previous video. I'm posting a link to it, should be appearing on screen right now. This video is a little bit like a part two to that video, because I was approached on social media about it and somebody asked me if I write this much code every time I make a HTTP request using fetch. So the answer is generally not. I usually wrap this code inside a custom function and insert the relevant uh, data and specifications dynamically. And in that way, I can make a fetch request in one single line of code, and all of this can be placed uh, at the bottom of my script or in a separate module. So I'm not gonna be going through modules today, but I will be showing you how you can uh, put this at the bottom of your script and make uh, fetch requests in a single line. So what we're going for by the end of this video is that you can make a fetch request like this. Uh, so you will be able to determine the URL and then the second argument will be the type. And then the third, so get, post, put, or delete. And then the final argument would be the data in case it's a post or a put request. Uh, so you won't have to write all this out every time you want to make a request. You can just copy and paste the custom function into your script and start using it as many times as you like. So like in the last video, I am using uh, this API to make all of my requests, uh, recres.in. So thank you very much to the team there for making this available for free. So it's possible to test uh, HTTP requests. Uh, so if you scroll down on their homepage, you can go down here and see what valid uh, HTTP requests are. So to make a get request, for example, it's recres.in forward slash API, forward slash users. Now they've got a query here, so they're getting just the second page, but if we didn't have this query, it would just be API users, and then we get a list of the users. We can get a single user if we say forward slash ID, so that's for a get request. The way you make a post request with, with them is API forward slash users and then just post the data there and then you should get back an object with the data for the new user. Put, a little bit different from post because you have to actually specify the user that you want to update information for. So again, you'll get an object back with the updated information and a delete request. You specify the user that you want to delete and you don't need to contain any more information in your request. And if it's successful, we should just get back a 204 response, letting us know that our request was successful and there's no data object that is returned in the case of a delete request. So I'm going to delete, first of all, this get request. And the reason is that the fetch request in the second position, there's nothing there. And that's because if you make a fetch request like this, by default, it is a get request. So you don't need to go and say, for example, here we've got method post, you don't need to do that. And you also don't need to post any data, so you can leave all of that out. Now, usually that's quite a nice shortcut if you're making a get request, but for this function, that's not what we want to do. We want to specify exactly what we're doing. So I don't want that default behavior. And for a delete request, there's no data that's sent in there. So that can be deleted as well. So I'm really going to be using this post and put uh, request as a template for the custom function. And the good thing is it does specify in the second argument, everything about the request. So the type, um, the body, you can see we're passing in some data and it does send back an object as well. So what I'm going to do is wrap all of this functionality inside a function. I'm gonna call that custom fetch. And then I'm going to want to specify some parameters here afterwards. So that's going to be 
first of all the URL or the endpoint. So I just paste that in there. So first of all, the URL as a parameter. Uh, I want the type of request. So I want to um, pass in information about whether it's a GET request or a POST or a PUT, etc. And finally, any data. So this is going to be optional. Um, we're always going to need to specify the URL. We're always going to need to specify the type. But data is going to be just for uh, POST and PUT requests. So now what I do inside here is actually I'm going to get rid of this comment first of all. And then for the post, um, so I'm specifying as a string here post, rather than hard code that, I'm now going to say what the type is. Okay, and the type is going to be whatever we pass in. Um, and the endpoint is going to be also whatever we pass in, in the first position. Uh, headers, we can leave this as it is because most post and put requests are of type application JSON. And then with the body JSON, we want here the data to be dynamic as well. So we can pass in data. And then we have the rest here. So we don't need to um, specify anything else. So this will already start working actually if we want to make a post request. So I'm going to say custom fetch, pass in. So I'm going to pass in the information here to make a post request. So it's recres in forward slash API forward slash users. So you enter that in the same way that you would an ordinary, um, an ordinary fetch request. And in the second position, we're going to say of type and it's going to be post. Now, if I run this and we check out the result, this should already be working. Okay, so you can see HTTP request was successful and we've created a new user with the ID of 70 and it's letting us know exactly when it was created. Now, I didn't in fact post any data in there, so let me create a some data that we pass in in the third position. So I'm just going to, you, you're probably going to store this in a variable somewhere and then pass it in. I'm just going to do it in line. So I'm going to say name, uh, Captain Anonymous. Okay, now if I rerun it, you'll see it should return the object that we've created. So now we have the data name, uh, Captain Anonymous. So that's the name of the user. Now we're going to need to do a little bit more work on the function before it's complete because we don't always want to send data. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say if type equals and then post, in fact, I can make that a strict uh, check or it's type uh, put, okay, then it's going to run the code inside the if statement. So we're going to just wrap that there. And then that should still be working. Hopefully, if I refresh, you see it's having the same result, we've created another user. Now I also want the functionality for a get request. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to simply copy and paste this. Okay, and I'm going to post it above. And instead, I'm going to say get request, and then I'm going to change this so it's appropriate for a get request. So for example, the body, um, we're not sending any data in a uh, get request and everything else should be okay. So again, checking the rec res for the uh, get request, it's API forward slash users. So if I make that now, the endpoint, so was it user or users, users? And then we make this a get request and there's no data being sent. So hopefully this now works. And that would mean that we have both 
the post and the put as well as the get working. So here we go, we've got page one, a total of 12, and we get information about uh, the users. So if I open this data up here, you can see there's six users, emails, names, etc. So all that's left to do now is to create the delete functionality. Now, we did see earlier here for a delete request, uh, no object is sent back. So it's just a 204 response. That means we don't need to do any of this handling down here, like when we get an object back from get or post and put. So I'm going to again copy the get request and I'm going to paste it down here and then change this to delete. Okay, and then I need to just get rid of this because this makes no sense. There's no uh, object to um, turn from JSON to a JavaScript object. And I don't want to log console data because there's no data. I don't need to return the result of this because there is no um, result to pass on for further processing. But I do want to keep catch just in case there's an error with fetch itself. So I'm going to save that and head up to our call here. So our single line, and we can simply say users forward slash two, and then delete. And that's going to hopefully delete uh, user two successfully. Let's see how that goes. And we know it has because it's HTTP request successful. We don't see any more information there because we're getting nothing back from the delete request. So this is how you can do it. If you wanna make several requests, you can just keep copying this. You don't have to write all of this out anymore. You can just use this one liner. So I could make several fetch requests here. Let's just make three in a row. So post, put, and delete. So in the first one, I want to get the list of the users. In the post, I want to uh, post a new user. So I just say users and I'm going to put for two. Okay, and these need some sort of information. So I'm going to um, store name. I'm going to say original. So the object's going to say, or I just say post data. So we can distinguish between the post and the put. I'm giving them slightly different data. Okay, and then the optional third position, I'm going to say this is the put data. And then finally, delete. We don't have to do anything for that. That's That endpoint is fine. We're deleting user two. So now, if I head over to the browser, we should be making four requests, one after the other, and they're all successful. Uh, so we can see for the first one, we get all the users, the get request. For the second one, we should have this updated at, so that's been posted uh, successfully. Um, we've also got the, um, so that's the updated, that's the put, this is the post, you can see there. And also you can see that line 57, um, HTTP request successful, that is all we're gonna get back from the delete request, but that's enough to know that it was working. Okay, so that's it for this video. I hope this simplifies your life when you're using Fetch.